I'm here at the Warner Brothers studio just outside of London. We're gonna go inside, see all the amazing Harry Potter stuff that they have. So let's get started right now. Warner Brothers studio was so cool. They have pots that stir themselves and they also show you how they made the effect of Harry becoming invisible using the invisibility cloak. Now guys, please consider hitting that subscribe button for all the cool stuff that I'm about to show you. Because if you do subscribe, it'll help me make up for all the money that I spent at the cafe and the Warner Brothers studio. Now, without further ado, let's get started. One of the cool things that you will see when you first walk in is the Great Hall. It's not the Great Hall that they used for when they walk in in their first year, but it is the Great Hall that they used when they were taking their OWL exams. So they still have some of the desks there, and I think that is really cool. you can walk into a really big room. They have so many crazy things. Like I was saying in the beginning, they have pots that stir themselves. Here's a clip of that. They show the Gryffindor and Slytherin common rooms, which I also liked because they were cool. And they also show the boys dormitory where Harry slept in with Ron, Neville, and many other boys. Then there are a few people who do special effects and they show you how to do that. Here is a video of how they made the effect that Harry was becoming invisible when he put the invis invisibility cloak over his shoulders. Because I'm not wearing green, nothing this effect wouldn't interfere with any part of my body, but if I was wearing a bright green jumper, my entire torso would vanish into the background and I'd be left with hands floating around as well as my legs, so it would look a bit strange. And you probably guessed already that this is how we created the effect of invisibility. So let's switch to somewhere a bit more cozy. Ah, Gryffindor Common Room, perfect, because I am about to try to reenact a particular scene from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So, firstly, does anybody know what this is? Your fur hand went up most. Invisibility cloak, indeed, fantastic. What house do you in, madam? Do you own a particular house? Gryffindor, 10 points to Gryffindor. There we go, I'm keeping track. So, just over here, we have the Invisibility Cloak. This is the genuine one from the Harry Potter films. This one is probably ordered off Amazon, but it has the same design on it. It is a velvet fabric with lots of Celtic symbols and runes printed onto it by the art department. It was actually designed by a woman called Judy Anna Makovsky, who is the costume designer for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. You probably would have never noticed, though, that when you turn it inside out, there's a green fabric on the inside. So, what would happen is, when you project the background, in this case it would be the Gryffindor common room, behind the characters, in this case it would be Harry Potter, and when he gets his cloak out, he says, I don't know what this is, it's some kind of cloak, and then Ron says, well let's see, put it on, and then what he would do is, he would turn it inside out, and place it around him, and because this effect is honing in on the, the green material, including the green screen behind it, to replace it with a projected background, he would vanish into the background and become invisible, so you see, I'm invisible. That little dance? Exactly. <laughs> and then you can use this to actually create the impression that he's walking through the restricted section at night as well. So Harry would have just walked through with his lantern outstretched. Of course, it doesn't really work for me because I am much taller than Daniel Radcliffe was at the age of 11 and my legs are completely sticking out of the, of the invisibility cloak. So it doesn't really work as well for me, but you can see how it works for an 11 year old actor. After that, you can enter the Forbidden Forest. In there, there are giant spiders, centaurs, which my dad was really afraid of for some reason, and there was smoke coming out, and you could also switch a lever, and the store would open, light would, lights would turn on and off. It was so cool. After that, you can go outside, and you'll see a lot of cool things, including the night bus that Harry took, and you can also see where Harry grew up most of his life, in number four, Privet Drive. I thought that was so cool. 
And for probably the best part of this whole thing was blankets. The chandeliers were ginormous. So many people walking around. I thought that was absolutely incredible. Another cool thing was they had Diagon Alley. They included a lot of the stores too, like Weasley's Wizard Reese's, where Harry bought his first wand and owl headwig, and so many more other awesome stores. Bye guys, thank you so much for watching and please hit that subscribe button because I really need to make up for all the money I spent on that cafeteria food. Now, please thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. See you next time on Kelly's Corner. Bye.